On the Wembley Trail with Radio Hereford FC. Well, hello and welcome again to We're Going Down the Pub with me, Frank Williams, and the ever youthful, the ever green, the ever resplendent. Oh, were you up to something here? <laughs> <laughs> Another point when we finish this one will do. Mr. Simon Wright, of course, is with us, oh, and we are hurriedly, hurriedly having to do a ground guide for yeah. you on Kempston Rovers uh, FA Cup second qualifying round opponents next Saturday. We wanted a home FA Cup We game. did. We wanted Westfield's draw, frankly. Yeah, but we didn't get one. No, we didn't. No, we're on, we're on the road yet again. Three straight Saturdays yeah. on the road. Yeah. Four away games out of five. five. You know, uh, was it this time last year we had yeah. sort of eight on the trot, eight, wasn't it? Eight Saturdays in a row. Eight Saturdays yeah. away. We had a, a couple of home Tuesdays. Yeah. But, uh, of course, going to be busy. The next, if we get through this, the next round yeah. would uh, correspond with our home match against Dorchester, against Dunstable. Sorry, Dunstable. Dunstable. Sorry, too many yeah. So yeah, if that's a lead, be away. It, yeah, it could Four continue. In a row. And five in a row. Yeah. Goodness me. Right now, we've only been able to use secondary sources yeah. for this because of the short deadline, so yeah. nobody's visited. No, um, I honestly get the impression that there's probably not actually much to find without being rude to Kempston. It seems a, a very modest little club. In yep. terms of um, you know sort of infrastructure, the town itself, um, I just well, I didn't know it was a town. I thought it was a village, but we've had debates about what's a town and what's a village before many times, haven't we? But this is now a town of twenty thousand people. Right. Now, yes, I tell you what. Shall we yeah. call it a satellite? It's a satellite of Bedford, which yep. means it's yep. neither a village nor a town. Oh my word! It's, it's word. a satellite, satellite settlement. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's yeah, mighty big. But we satellite. could go into things like the concentric circle theory of urban development. Oh Lord, must we? No, I did a thesis <laughs> on that when I was uh, when I was at college. But no, we could. But it, it, I think it is. People switching off. At it this is point. a satellite. Yeah. Well, like it is two miles yeah. away. Yes, well, a lot of these clubs that we're playing uh, nearer mm -hmm. London, like mm -hmm. Chesham, for example, yeah. which is on the tube line. Are they fair? Out. It's up on the tube. You have to call that a satellite of London because it's not part of the suburbs no, of London. No, it's outside London, but it's not a town. It's not a village. It's a satellite, right? But okay. um, having agreed, it's a satellite of yeah. twenty thousand people. Twenty. That's the. Uh, yeah, that's that's Ross and Lemster combined. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Doesn't seem to be a place with, frankly, too much to excite travel writers or us. Right. Um, I'm going to do something a bit different. I'm going to throw a multiple choice question okay. at you, Frank. Okay. Right. Okay. Why are Kempston FC called the Walnuts? Mm. Right, now, it was a choice of three. I'm going to make it even more interesting to make a choice of four now. Right. Okay. Um, a, because they enjoy a whipping. You knew I was going to say that. Right. Uh, B, their team is for full, absolutely full to the brimming with hard nuts. Right. Or C, the town is famous for its walnut orchards. Uh, and you've got a D? I've got a D now, yes. A, a match was abandoned because of the volume of walnuts which were blown onto the pitch. Ooh. Which one would you go for? Well, you see, uh, I've never heard of the walnut orchards, although it sounds plausible. Mm. I'm not going to go for a team full of hard nuts uh, because, uh, <laughs> you know, they might have gone through a period where they weren't hard nuts, you never know. And the walnut whipping, well, I don't go for that one. No. No, I'm going to go for the... Where would they have blown in from, though? Walnuts, Walnuts are big things to blow about, aren't they? It must have yeah. been quite a tornado. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go for option D. Well, do you know, it could, it could be C and it could be D, depending on which source you believe. Ah. Apparently, yeah, the, the match was apparently 1895. And there were so many walnuts that the game was called off and they were called the walnuts ever since. That's what put them in a bit of a pickle then, didn't it? Oh, really? goodness me, that's a bad one, isn't it? But, um, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, the town is allegedly famous as walnut orchards. Right. Although I can find no reference to it anywhere other than there's a walnut walk and an orchard walk in the town. 
Um, but that's not really proof, is it? I, I think something a bit Royston Vasey esque is happening in Kempston. Clearly, some kind of local town for local people again. Um, and we mentioned Royston's living the dream, and I think that really does apply also to Kempston. They're, they've been around since 1884, another very, very old club. But last season was their first ever in Step 4. And they did ever so well. They, they, uh, they just missed the playoffs by a point. So, on that basis, I think the Walnut boys are going to be hard to crack. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. It's good. Dear. They don't get any better. Shall we get them out of the way? Okay. Go on in. Kempston do it in beds. There you go. We've got them all out of the way now. Oh, no. Terrible silence. There you go. Um, right. so, season before... Okay. Kempston were champions of the United Counties League, that's step five. Yep. And they've spent nearly all their years in that particular league. Um, so far this year, they're mid table. Managed a nil nil with Rushton, who were top of the table. But as we now know, they lost to Hartley Windley very late on, yes. on Saturday. Yep. Um, one goal up in 89 minutes and lost 2-1 and the manager was so annoyed he got sent off there you go um, I did find a slightly alarming quote from the manager of Farnborough and this is April so it's last season but yeah. talking about Kempston he said they're very direct and they want to punch up with us Okay. Now that's slightly uh, mm, teeth mm. grinding, isn't it? That's, it is. Yes, indeed. So I, I'm, I assume he's not talking literally. I hope not. Okay. What about sort of recent histories then? This, yeah, this um, century. Should yeah, I this say. century. The sort of time people actually recognise. Um, the club's fortunes really changed in 2002 when they they formed a partnership. So they become AFC Kempston Rovers um, to mark the fact they've got a merge of three local clubs and a coaching business. So this is what you'll see for anybody who goes. You'll see this massive organisation at Hill Grounds, their home ground. They've got 30 teams and they've got this huge complex of part-size uh, part and full-size grass pitches and 3G pitches. And they've also got Bedford College on, on tap now as well. So it's a proper community club, activities every single day, the bar's open seven days of the week. So presumably, as we'll find out later, it might be a half-decent bar. We'd hope so. We'd hope so. It doesn't... Well, what I can see is it's quite oh. small. Royston was very was pleasant, surprisingly wasn't good, wasn't it? Well, surprisingly good, but with a real ale on, it was very pleasant. Yeah. The IPA, Green King IPA. Oh, yeah. I did have to sample it. Have to now, if yep. that sort of brew is going to be available in that cluster of cubs in the Cambridge, Bedfordshire mm -hmm. area, sort of thing, I think a lot of people will be very happy with that. I think that's it's an exciting prospect, isn't it? But. Um, yeah, I mean, just to finish off that point, um, in 2016, they, the club dropped the AFC and they're now just Kempston Rovers again. Got an unusual setup, the Walnuts, they've got joint managers, um, Gary Flynn, Jimmy Stoyles. Now, Ke you know, we really don't want to be upsetting Stoyles, he's got a, he's got a black belt in judo. <laughs> Fairly unusual qualification, but uh, well, there you go. And there's a bit of keeping it in the family. We've not had much of keeping it in the family this year. His um, his brother Alex, who commonly known as Monty for some obscure reason. Monty Stoyles. Monty Stoyles. I love that. Yeah, That's it's a bit, it's a bit yeah. near the knuckle. Big yeah. post of censorship, isn't it? Um, okay. They're not terribly well supported. Last year they had an average of 120 through the gate, right. which actually is a 53% increase from what they had before. So it's, it's, it's a small club. They did get 500 recently when Rushton uh, played them in that sort of top of the table game. So the average is, is going to go up a bit. But what will that? The point about that really is they've got some experience, recent experience of hosting bigger crowds, which okay. is going to be handy for us, you know. It's, um, what about the ground then? It's a strange one. Well, a lot of them are. Yeah. A lot of them are, okay. All the club facilities are on what the thing they call the car park side of the ground. It's all one complex. Um, one sort of side of that complex is terracing on three steps. Uh, and there's a chunk of seating, I think, to one end. Not sure how many seats. Yep. Wikipedia says 100. I think that's an out date reference. I would imagine it probably has to be slightly more than that. Um, T-Bar is 
in this complex, and you know, presumably no, selling walnut whips is their number one line. Other chocolate confections mm -hmm. are available. Are available, yeah. absolutely. Okay. The other three sides, basically, they're just open with a bit of hard standing. So that's going to be very much like Royston. Yeah. It's very Royston-like, yeah. 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 And typical wet finger in the air, ground capacity of 2,000. Well, who knows? Admission normally £9, concessions fiver, and in the 16s a total quid. It may be... No, it is that. That's is what it, it is. That's been announced today. Good news, That's good fine. news. Good and car that. parking, plenty of it. Apparently so, yes. Although they're not used to having us in town, but there you go. Indeed. Um, yeah, we mentioned the clubhouse. Um, got a capacity of 120, so that sounds about Royston size again, doesn't yep. it? Now, they have sold... Wells Eagle IPA in the past, so I guess that's quite similar. And um, some of his cider, I'm not familiar with that, but no. apparently people seem to like it. And they normally do food as well. Now, from what I can see on the map, it's sort of very th local alternatives, very thin on the ground. It's sort of stuck out in the middle of nowhere again. Nearest seems to be a Green King pub called the King's Arms. In, that's in Market Street, and it's about a mile away, as I said. Three rotating guest ales, but mysteriously no food weekends at lunchtime. Mm, strange. Yep. Yeah. Nearest Weatherspoons, we always have to mention spoons, don't we? And that's called the Pilgrim's Progress, which is probably quite appropriate. But it's a couple of miles away. At least two miles, yeah. yeah. Now, I ought to say at this point, there is a trend building that everywhere I recommend, yeah. nobody goes there. Yeah, yeah, I, yes. So just to stress, I won't be going in either of those particular locations, so if you want to go, feel free. Right. Is okay. that because you're not going at all? Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's a very good reason <laughs> for that, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, one of those things. Right. Yeah. Um, right, get, getting there. Getting there, yes. Yeah, so another longish one, 133 miles from the Shire. In, you really need to be looking at the M1. It's 10 miles off Junction 13. Right. And I but think it's only 94 miles for me. Yeah. yeah. Another bonus yep. for the exiles, eh? Train. Train, yeah. Now, it's the usual sort of ridiculous scenario. Three and a half hours there, four mm. hours back. Yeah. Uh, plus, uh, you need a number one bus out of Bedford Station. But it is a number one bus. Top of the tree. That's actually, oh, yeah. that's actually worth, worth the investment. If you really want to go by train from the Shire, then... Thanks to Graham Johnson for pointing out, buy tickets from Hereford to Bletchley and then get a, a cheap day return Bletchley to Bedford day ticket. Right. Uh, that cuts the cost in half down to a mere £40. <laughs> right, that's a weird, uh, a weird line it's apparently. It's a weird line, yeah. yeah I mean, um, train spotters love it. It's, it's a single carriage and they've got lots of these little halts in the middle of nowhere, a bit like the uh, Heart of Wales line if you've ever been on that, and weird empty factories. At one point the train actually goes right through the middle of an empty factory. It's, it's a really strange one. But, you know, it, it's a lot of money, 40 quid, it's double yeah. coach costs. Yeah. So. And Reg is on his second coach, I believe. Yes, now, getting up his second good. coach. That's good news, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. But of course, the London balls or the South East balls. Oh, they've got it easy again, haven't they? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Regular Red, trains. Out of, out of London St Pancreas. Um, uh, pancreas. That That's as well. Pancreas. Pancreas. Yeah. <laughs> a bit interesting. Pa uh, very painful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> Um, if we run that number one bus for five yes. minutes, or right. you, can, you can do some exercise and walk for 40. So, right. there you go. That's a quick round up to uh, the activity next week. Well, it looks like it's going to be a three hour trip by coach. Yeah, so a nine, yes, a nine a.m. Long start, long start, something yeah. like that, I would imagine. Yes. But they're proving very successful. The um, the, the coach parties when they arrive are in very good spirits and are uh, oh. very well oiled. Yes, they do liven the place up somewhat. Yeah, don't and they? if we have the same sort of cordial welcome that we had at Royston, mm. uh, who are only, what, 12 miles further on, then we're in for a really good day. Maybe you guys will get an ice cream van this time. Uh, you never know, do you? Mm. Well, that's, uh, that's great. That's uh, all for this one. Yep. Your guide to Kempston Rovers, FA Cup, second qualifying round. Yep. And uh, we hope to progress further. We if, we, if we do, we'll probably have to do another away ground guide <laughs> <laughs> later in September. But anyway, we'll see you again have soon. Good one, yeah, thanks very much for listening. Bye now.
On the Wembley Trail with Radio Hereford FC.